barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. So I have received, man, ooh, man, I mean, over, over at least 13 DMs or emails about that comment I made to Adrian Broner. And, and, and that's what inspired this video. I'm not being braggadocious or anything like that. Uh, but I just want to, because I know that Pierce is the young generation, and I know it. Um, this moment can galvanize and, and and in hopes inspire you to save your money and build your legacy uh, more for your last name instead of Louis Vuitton, Gucci, etc., etc., etc. So if you don't know, some of you guys hadn't seen it, but. That video Ellie did went crazy, and and uh, we were I was there with him, and through those messages I got many DMs as I told you at least thirteen that I counted that I could that I could think off the top of my head, and uh, about when Adrian Broner and Tank Davis was walking through the uh, foyer area leaving, and we were talking about making money. He called me. That sounds like something a broke man would say. And little did he know that. I mean, I, I have an, I have a, I would consider it uh, above average net worth, and uh, um, and I just want to take this moment while I got you, while that while this moment got you guys' attention before it slips away, and and, and, and you know what else too, uh, uh, before I go in, when a white man tells you what he has, it's admirable. When a black man tells you what he has, he's bragging, he's backadocious, he's arrogant. Listen, at the end of the day, as I take the borrow that from Adrian Brown, I, I just want all of us to win. I say this all the time. I'm not in competition with none of you guys. Uh, I, I, I choose and want to be an ally to you guys. Uh, and I, I think this YouTube channel is, 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 is going in the direction which we all would like it to go right. But I just want to talk about this. So, so anyways, as I double down into the actual subject at hand, um, so I invested $120,000 in a property, right? And obviously it took some work ethic and discipline to save the $120,000, right? And because the Rams and it, it, it's not my genius, I didn't anticipate the Rams and everybody coming when I bought the property, but, um, the Rams, I knew the train was going to go through the, uh, you know, the Inglewood, L.A. area, that property is in that area. And um, but I didn't anticipate the Rams and uh, Chargers coming and then building a whole city center, basically, in Inglewood. Right. And so because that was built, the property value ballooned. Right. So what I did was uh, hypothetically, this is a hypothetical video, <laughs> just in case you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, so the scenario is I got the property appraised and it appraised for $1.5 million, right? My initial investment was $120,000 was my down payment and I paid the loan down to about $300,000. So I have $1.2 million in equity. The bank, any average bank would give you 70, 60 to 70% of that, right? So, so what I did was, and you guys know I sold my Bentley. So what I did was I wanted to be more efficient. You know, Bentley doesn't serve two kids well. So what I did was I got rid of the Bentley. I got rid of the Lexus truck. I had a Lexus truck as well. I got rid of that as well. And I said, I want to be as efficient as possible. I'm raising two kids basically right now. One is three and one is just born. And, um, so I said, I'm going to use the equity from this property to reset, to like realign, right? Recalibrate. That would be the word recalibrate the bigger purpose. So I got rid of the Bentley and what I did in the Lexus and I bought two Teslas, right? All, although expensive and I'll give uh, hypoth hypothetical numbers. The Teslas cost anywhere between one hundred and one hundred five thousand dollars. So I got two Teslas, right? And mind you, I pulled. Oh, first, I pulled out against my equity. But I'm, I'm going to tell you the hypothetical numbers in in a second. So, so that equals 
two hundred and ten thousand dollars, right? And also, I went and put uh, um, uh, what do you call that? Those uh, energy saving things. I put it on the house uh, panels, solar panels. I put solar panels on the home to make the home more efficient, right? And to take it a step further, here's where it gets interesting. And I was telling about tanks, clothes, and all that. I bought my daughter a property. I took the equity out and bought my daughter a property. So it will take 18 years to mature. And my daughter's actually making money. My daughter actually has a bank account. My daughter actually has an LLC, right? And so I pulled out, so let's say hypothetically, I pulled out $300,000, right? I don't have to pay cash for the Teslas, but I got cash because I sold the Bentley, I sold the Lexus, right? So I have cash on hand, but because my loan rate is only 1.9 on both Teslas, right? I don't have to, uh, that's a low rate, so I don't have to pay that down. I rather pay more on my daughter's property because I'm gonna get that at three and a half, four percent, right? On a on a larger loan amount. So what I did, so uh, so let's say I took out three hundred thousand dollars from the equity, right? And I paid it down. So now that payment goes to like six hundred thousand dollars for that property because I paid it down to three three hundred thousand, and since I borrowed three hundred thousand, that loan payment is three hundred thousand dollars, right? So what I did was. I took out the $300,000 and I put the money down on both the Teslas. I paid cash for the solar panels and I uh, uh, bought my daughter property. I put a down payment on for my daughter to buy a property and it'll be paid off by the time she graduates from high school. Right? So now let's do the hypothetical numbers. So let's say I paid down my loan. So my loan was probably... Thirteen hundred dollars. It went up to about mm, twenty nine hundred dollars. So now I'm paying twenty nine hundred dollars a month on the original property, which is worth one point five million dollars. And keep in mind that property hypothetically brings in anywhere between six and seven thousand dollars a month. So I'm still clearing about three thousand dollars a month. I was clearing about five and a half thousand dollars a month, right? So now let's go to my daughter's property. So let's say hypothetical numbers, right? I'm going to just give you nice round numbers. So let's say um, I bought the property, I put the excess down, whatever it was, and my loan payment is $2,200 with insurance and everything and uh, grass and, you know, uh, landscaping, water, trash. Let, let's say that's, let's say $2,500. And let's say the rents, I'll probably bring in about five thousand dollars a month right so to the naked eye it looks like i just made a lateral move uh -uh -uh -uh. i'm drawing equity on two properties and i'll never pay for gas again and i got solar in the house and let's say the tesla payments is probably eleven hundred dollars a month with about thirteen hundred dollars $1,200, $1,300 with the insurance and the car payment, right? So one property is paying for everything, and I'm still drawing equity from the original property, plus I'm getting equity off of two properties. That's how you build legacy. And and, and I know, uh, actually, and, 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 and this is what I want to drive home on this channel about financial literacy, being accountable. Being accountable for every penny, and and I think it's essential that uh, people like me who've actually gone through the experiences of actually buying property and saving money to actually buy the property, making sacrifices, coming from nothing to uh, having having a piece of a pie. I, I I think it's essential that we share this information. You know, what I mean, be open and candid about because when people make money, they want you to believe that they got it easy. It wasn't nothing easy. I, I, like I told you, I was homeless with a college degree for two years. I tell you guys that all the time. You understand what I'm saying? I was sleeping on everybody's couch for two years. Go figure. So, um, 
But I just want to take this time because I think it's important because we look on TV, we see Adrian Broner come through dripping, right? <laughs> Tank come through dripping. And they're telling you how to spend their money because they make their money in lump sums. But when in actuality, that's a very small percentage of us that gets their cash in one lump sum. Right. And we become desensitized when we say, oh, he's only making one million dollars for this fight. Oh, he's only making five hundred thousand dollars. It's like that's a huge lump sum of money, especially when you don't live in a major city and you have no state tax. Imagine that. So uh, I just want to encourage you guys. Be accountable to every penny that you have. Be accountable to every penny that you have. And if you follow me on Instagram, I chronicle. I, I did this for you guys on Instagram so you can actually see it, um, you know, and if you followed me through that time span, I put you through the experience because I'll be honest, I wanted to buy a Rolls Royce. I was going to buy a four door Rolls Royce. I test drove many of them and I said, you know, for five years un until my daughter's five, I'm going to reassess when my daughter turns five years old. So five years, I'm going to keep this Tesla. I'm going to save money on gas and uh we're gonna do it that way and uh no maintenance either on the on the teslas either so i'm just trying to be as efficient as i can with my money no matter how much money you have it feels better when you can own most of it right <laughs> because you gotta pay taxes bills kids family health you understand what i'm saying so so at the end of the day i just want to share this with you guys Hopefully it made sense. You probably got to watch the video again to, to really see how I how I broke it down. But uh, and some of you guys will say, how did I save one hundred twenty thousand dollars? The same way you save ten dollars, the same way you save one hundred dollars is the same way you save one hundred twenty thousand dollars. All it is is just another zero. It's the same practice. It's the same practice. If you can sell ten things, you can sell a hundred things. If you can sell a hundred things, you can sell a thousand things. If you can sell a thousand things, you can sell ten thousand things. Right. That's real life. You understand. And uh, hopefully this video reaches you guys with open ears. And uh, but, but I just think that since I had you guys attention, uh, I'm eating the icy right now. You know, I got to only can eat sweets and liquid calories right now <laughs> and fluid calories. So. Uh, I'm anxious to I'm looking at it while I'm doing this damn video. But uh, anyways, man, barbershop conversations, man. Hopefully um, this video helps and you can have this conversation with your significant other, with your mom, uh, with your brothers, with your best friends. Put your money together. Group economics is the, is, oh shit. Group economics is the key, All right? Group economics works. If y'all can do group economics and set a goal for two years and buy this duplex and one of y'all live in each and y'all make an agreement that y'all going to sell it in five years sell it in five years and you can live the rest of your life in a house and you'll have enough left over to uh buy a income property and you'll be set and you can still work your job or work your business and draw in and draw equity from two properties and by the time you're 55 those two properties will set you free i'm being honest it don't take a hundred properties. It don't take 10,000 properties. One, two, three, four properties can change your family's life forever. It, it, you ain't got to think of it in terms, but, but when you get one, it takes care of the second one because of the equity. If you're disciplined and keep on making payments and you're not pulling out your equity to go on vacation by depreciating assets like cars, clothes, spending money on women. You understand what I'm saying? Traveling for no reason, going to Vegas and gambling, Atlantic City, wherever you live. But uh, anyways, man, barbershop conversations, man. I Hopefully, this guy's get to you. I titled it like that so it can get more eyes on it. But uh, uh, anyways, man, barbershop conversations, man. Property is the key, man. Property is the key. I, I never was the smartest, never was the tallest, never was the best looking, never was the most intelligent. But some might say I'm savvy. I'm pragmatic. I'm disciplined. All right. It's 138 in the morning. I literally just got done running 20 minutes ago. I got done running. Nah, about 107. I got done running. 19, 107, somewhere in there. So anyways, man, barbershop conversations, man. 
we are a sum of our decisions we make in life. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace, guys.